Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy and thank you for joining me for another Trig on Tuesday. Now, we've looked at a number of things so far, but today I want to deal with something that we've all familiar with, and that is the curve calculator. Many of us have used it, but how many of us actually know how it's put together mathematically? Let's cue up the music and learn about it together. Now, when do we use the curve calculator? Well, how much of these buildings in Chicago should we actually see from the shores of Lake Michigan? Well, in order to do that, we use something called the Advanced Earth Curve Calculator by Walter Bislin. And we're gonna need some key information. First of all, what is the distance between ourselves and the city of Chicago? They say it's 56 miles there. We're gonna go ahead and use 60 in our example. And second, what is the elevation of my observation? Now, they don't mention this on all the flat earth channels, but in reality, the observation occurred from 180 feet atop Warren Dunes. So let's go ahead and have a look and see what that would come up to. Okay, so here's Walter Bislin's advanced earth curve calculator. Now, if we go down here, there's a couple of settings that we need to change. First, you'll notice that I made it miles and feet because Murica. Second, the observer height is put in at 180 feet. The target distance is 60 miles. And the target size, well, the Willis Tower, the old Sears Tower, is 1,450 feet tall. Now, since we can clearly see the Willis Tower in the picture, that just makes a nice reference for us to use. So let's go ahead and do a couple of things here. First of all, let's put in zero refraction. Now, the reason that I'm going to put in zero refraction will be apparent in a moment, but right now, Let's go ahead and see what we have. Now, according to this, we should see 183 feet at the top of the Willis Tower. That means that 1,266 feet is missing. Now, the other thing that's kind of interesting is the distance to the horizon on the surface is going to be about 16 and a half miles. This is what comes out of the curve calculator. Let's go see if we can do it by hand. Okay, so let's go over the basic geometry of the curve calculator. Now, here we have the Earth. That's the center of the Earth. Now, we're observing from Warren Dunes. So we're sitting up atop this mountain right here. And our height is 180 feet. Now, the distance between us and that building in Chicago is 60 miles. Now, what we're going to do is do a series of triangles because what we're going to use is called the Pythagorean Theorem. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. So let's go ahead and set this up. Here is the distance between us and Chicago, 60 miles. That forms a triangle like so. Now, we can divide that into two triangles because what we want to do is we want to get this right triangle here in the center. We want to get that right angle. And then we can solve it using the Pythagorean Theorem because that's what the Pythagorean Theorem is designed to work with. So we've got a couple of legs. The hypotenuse is going to be the radius of the Earth plus the height of our observation. So we've got radius plus height squared equals the distance from our observation to the horizon squared and the radius squared. Now, we know all of these values with one exception. We know the height, we know the radius of the Earth, but we do not know this distance A. So let's see if we can solve for A, and the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna take the hypotenuse and we're gonna, squared, and we're gonna subtract the radius squared from it, and that'll give us A squared. So let's go ahead and put the numbers in. Now, just for convenience, I've not converted this to feet. I've left it in miles, and we're going to get an answer in miles. So, the radius of the Earth is 39.59. The height of our observation, 180 feet, is 0 0.035 miles. So, 
So that's r plus h, and we're going to square it. Then we're going to subtract 3959 squared, and that will give us a squared. With me so far? Now, you can do the math for that yourself, but we're going to come up with a squared equals 277. Now, if we take the square root of that, we're going to come up with a length of a here of 16.64 miles. Now, we're cooking with gas. Our goal here is to find the hidden height of the building, which means that we need to work with this triangle on the right. The only reason that we needed to find A was to figure out that leg of that triangle. And we can do that very simply. The only thing that we have to do is we take the total distance, 60 miles, we subtract A, and we come up with B. And that's 43. 0.36 miles. Now let's go ahead and clear all of this so that we can do the same thing with this triangle here on the right. Now we have different values for this one, not just numbers, but recall we knew the radius and the height and we knew the radius here. We didn't know that distance. On this second triangle, we know the radius, we know that distance, but we don't know the radius plus the hidden height. So what we want to solve for is that hidden height. So we're going to use a straight version of the Pythagorean theorem for that. All right, now we're having fun. Let's go ahead and put some numbers on this bad boy. Now, recall that the radius of the Earth plus the hidden height squared equals b, the distance from the horizon to the building squared, plus the radius of the Earth squared. Radius of the Earth plus hidden height squared equals 43.36 squared plus 3,059 miles squared. And then that gives us 1880.1 and 15,673,681, which is the radius of the Earth squared. Now, when you add these two together, you get a great big number. You take the square root of that number and you get 3959.237. Now, since the radius of the Earth is 3959, the 0.237 miles is the hidden height of the building works out to 1,251.36 feet. Let's go ahead and see what the curve calculator said. Well, the curve calculator came up with, with 1,266.08 feet, a difference of about 15 feet. So why is it 15 feet different? Well, probably just little rounding errors, all right? I only went out a certain number of significant digits, and quite frankly, 15 feet over 60 miles isn't all that bad. But wait, there's more. That's how you calculate it with zero refraction. Now, how do you fix that to deal with normal refraction in our atmosphere? Well, that's where this seven over six R comes into play. Let's go back to the curve calculator and have a look at something. So here we are at the curve calculator. We've got zero refraction, 180 feet, 60 miles, and 1450 feet for the size of the building. And here's what we got. Now down here, I want to draw your attention to this, and that is the apparent radius versus the radius of the Earth. The radius of the Earth you can put in values for. The apparent radius is what the measurements are actually made from. Now let me show you what happens when we go and put in standard refraction. Okay. We have a refractive index in the atmosphere right now. Notice that the actual radius of the Earth has not changed. But let's look down at the apparent radius of the Earth, 4769 miles. So why is the radius of the Earth recorded correctly in one spot and listed as 4769 miles in another? That's because it's the apparent radius of the Earth due to the refraction of the atmosphere. The effect of the refraction of the atmosphere is to make the Earth seem larger than it actually is. And how much larger? Seven over six times the radius. Now that's a pretty good rule of thumb. The rule of thumb that I use is that the apparent radius of the Earth is about 1.22 times the radius of the Earth. That seems to come out a little better for me. 
but let's go ahead and see how that works. Now I went ahead and did the math and we'll just follow along real quick. This is something that you can do at home if you want. I put the pertinent numbers up. So Pythagorean theorem, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Well, what are these? We want to find a squared, which is that number right there. That is the radius of the earth plus the height squared minus the radius of the earth squared. The radius of the earth that we're going to use is going to be not 39.59. We're going to use 47.70 because that is the refracted radius of the earth. So putting those numbers in, here's our radius of the earth plus the height of Warren Dunes minus the radius of the earth and both of those terms are squared. That means that this distance, A, is 18.272 miles. That's up a little bit from the 16.64 because refraction causes the horizon to move outward. Now the balance of the 60 miles is 41.728. Using that as side B for the triangle, we go ahead and calculate it through using the Pythagorean theorem as we did last time. And what we do is we come up with the radius plus the hidden height. Subtracting 4770 from that value, we get the hidden amount, and that works out to 963.67 feet. Let's see what the curve calculator said. 974.85 feet, about 11 feet more than we calculated. Second, where's the horizon? 18.33, and we got 18.272. Again, very close. So now you know how to use the curve calculator and where these changes for refraction come in. And we were able to actually pretty much match the findings of the curve calculator simply doing it up on the whiteboard. Remember, hashtag best use of whiteboard. So this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you very much for stopping by. Now in our next episode, we're gonna start having some fun with triangles. We're gonna go over the Pythagorean theorem again we're also going to go over the rule of sines and the rule of cosines. And then we're going to finish that up by learning how to calculate great circle distances on spheres. So I hope to see you then. Take care, guys. Bye.